The Bank of America Racing Challenge covers the quarter racing spectrum. Five divisions offer regional qualifiers throughout the U.S., Canada, and Brazil. It all culminates with an October showdown in each of the graded finals. Let's get caught up on the early qualifiers next. Hello and welcome to another season of the AQHA Racing Challenge Update. I'm Jim Byers. We're partway through the schedule of regional qualifying races that will set the lineups for the graded division finals. This year, those are October 24th at the Downs in Albuquerque, New Mexico. The challenge races are split into divisions based on a horse's age, distance preference, and in one case, gender. Two and three year olds, fillies and mares, distance lovers, and 440 yard championship three year olds and up begin by winning or at least faring well in regional qualifying events. A victory or strong showing in a regional puts a horse in the final for that division. Horses from multiple circuits in the US, Canada and South America then meet on a multiple stakes championship night of racing each fall. Let's begin our recap of the early qualifiers with the Ataquan Derby division. Three year olds go 400 yards pointing to a grade three final. Los Alamitos gets the first call for sophomores. This one is desperately close between the five, Mr. Tornado, and six, Zoom on Jess. And giving the Freely storming into a narrow lead. Mr. Tornado, Zoom on Jess are coming hard. Mr. Tornado, Zoom on Jess giving Freely. Photo between Mr. Tornado and Zoom on Jess. Mr. Tornado gets the nod over Zoom on Jess in a dash that one might hope can send both to the Ataquan Derby final giving Freely settled for third. Jonathan Rome on the winning rider. As the California bred Mr. Tornado wins his first stakes event, he's owned by Fernando Flores and trained by Felix Gonzalez. To Ogden, Utah for the Ataquan Weber Downs Regional Challenge. We'll see this romping winner coming up in another challenge, Dr. Tool. This Texas bred breaks fast and never looks back. Dr. Tool is a decisive winner over Kalita and Liquid Courage B. An $18,000 yearling purchase, Dr. Tool is owned and trained by Luis Gonzalez, a Sus Valenzuela aboard. The program visited Oregon with the Ataquan Grants Pass Derby Challenge. Just a little more overpowered the field under Ruben Lozano. The runner-up was disqualified, so Honey's Painted Pop is officially second, with approval given third. The Texas bred just a little more is trained by Danny Montes for owner Silvia Aparicio. Some 700 miles east of Grants Pass is Pocatello Downs. Its derby challenge was essentially a replay of the one six weeks earlier at Weber Downs, as Dr. Tool beats Kalita once again under Jesus Valenzuela. This time, brilliant cut cartel is third. Hello, I'm Selena Molina, singer, actress, animal lover, and racehorse owner. Few things give me greater joy than to watch them do what they truly love, to compete at the racetrack. And like thousands of other quarter horse owners, I respect and love my horses and give them the best of care. They're like family. Come see the world's fastest athletes at a racetrack near you. I might just see you there. This is the AQHA Racing Challenge Update, powered by American Quarter Horse Association. COVID-related cancellations of some quarter horse meets have shuffled the regional schedule. In the case of the ARC Distaff Division, a race originally slated for Sundowns in Washington was moved to Weber. The Distaff Division is for fillies and mares three and up at 400 yards, and they go for a grade one final. In the ARC Weber Downs Distaff Challenge, number four, Loco Ocho flies over a fast track to post a 105 speed index. Loco Ocho leads every step to topple She's a Dash Air and favorite bling. The ever-present Jesus Valenzuela aboard. Bred in Idaho by her owners Les and Darla Barlow, Loco Ocho is a four-year-old filly trained by Garth Blattner.
Last year, the ARC Canterbury Park Distaff Challenge was a showcase for multiple graded winner Curl's Happy Wagon, who went on to run fourth as the favorite in the final at Albuquerque. This year's edition featured another Oklahoma bred, Linder 16, the 2018 Remington Park Oklahoma bred Futurity winner. Under Berkeley Packer, Linder 16 holds off Fosse with a political mogul third. Linder 16 is an apolitical Jess filly with earnings of more than $623,000. For owners Tom Maher and Richard Tobin, Jason Olmstead trains. To Evergreen Park in Grand Prairie, Alberta for its Arc Distaff Challenge. First prize cruise drifts out while on the lead as number three Lovely Cuvée finishes well. Lovely Cuvée previously raced in Oklahoma and made the black gold 440 futurity last year at Will Rogers Downs. Now trained by Alan Goodsell for Beckham Ranch, the Kentucky-bred three-year-old filly was ridden by J.B. Botello to get past first prize cruise with Get It Hot third. Long-winded horses have their place in the BOA Challenge program as well. In the AQHA Distance Division, it's three-year-olds and up going 870 yards, and at the end of that road is a grade one final. This division's first regional came during the Remington Park Spring Meeting, the Grade 2 RP Distance Challenge. Higher Flying Eagle does indeed fly from an outside post to take an immediate lead. This was only his third career hook race, but Higher Flying Eagle has won them all. He dispatches this field by two lengths under Josh Romero. Madewell held on for second over Ms. Esther. The Texas bred four year old gelding by favorite cartel. Higher Flying Eagle is trained by Clint Crawford for owner Joel Rod Pierce. And they're racing. In Shakopee, Minnesota, high on Chablis drew the outside post, but zooms to the lead early under Berkeley Packer and wins by two and a half over Edelman and Summer Hills Hero. Day, but high on Chablis was intoxicatingly good. Like other hook specialists, high on Chablis blossomed when stretched out. Clint Crawford, the trainer for owners Jerry Blackman, Mike Shaw, and Connie Nobles. The John Deere Juvenile Challenges began late because of COVID-19 cancellations at Sam Houston and Rieto. Ruidoso Downs was already on the John Deere Juvenile schedule with its own grade three challenge for two-year-olds, but also picked up the Rieto race. In this 350-yard test, the eight Charlie's Fast Man pours it on late. It is Jess the Lady and Charlie's Fast Man. Jess the Lady has the lead, Charlie's Fast Man outside. Charlie's Fast Man won. It was a long wait from the trials at Rieto March 1st to the rescheduled final at Ruidoso in mid-July. In between, Charlie's Fast Man started twice. The Oklahoma bred Colt Breaks is made nicely here for owner Jose Mendoza and trainer Eloy Navarro. Jaime Leos aboard as Charlie's Fast Man beats Jess the Lady and Blackwater Bengal. More hopefuls looking for a place in the Grade 2 John Deere Juvenile Final went to Ratama in the rescheduled Sam Houston Juvenile Challenge. Number four, his time to deal opens up early in this one. They race towards the finish. His time to deal on the outside Superfly B, but it's going to be his time to deal winning it easily. His time to deal won a trial for this and improves to two for two with a dominating score over Cartel Creek and Hot Lady Returns. Jose Vega, the winning rider. His time to deal is a Texas bred from the productive dam Lady Lilia. Bred and owned by Pete Scarmardo, Leon Bard trains. Still to come, we'll visit the championship division. That will take us back to Canterbury, and we'll take a look at hopefuls from south of the equator. Hello, I'm Selena Molina, singer, actress, animal lover, and racehorse owner. Few things give me greater joy than to watch them do what they truly love to compete at the racetrack. And like thousands of other quarter horse owners, I respect and love my horses and give them the best of care. They're like family. Come see the world's fastest athletes at a racetrack near you. I might just see you there. The championship division is for three-year-olds and up at 440 yards. Traditionally, it's the richest race with the most celebrated field on championship night. The regionals in that division are well underway. With the first of those back in the spring at Jockey Club de Sorocaba in Brazil. Emoção. E agora, abriu, abriu, abriu. Oh, e dá na partida 
para o sétimo para do programa. É a grande final do South American Racing Challenge. Largou muito bem. In this one, Yankee Verde wallops the competition by two lengths under Dean Macedo, defeating Zion Verde and full-time Eagle. Owned by Stud Dos Amigos, Yankee Verde is a six-year-old son of no secrets here, bred in Brazil, and trained by A.J. Macedo. Back to Canterbury for its Grade 3 BOA Championship Challenge. In what becomes a match race, Danger on the outside hooks up with graded winner Eagles Fly Higher. Danger! Way too good! Here's another Oklahoma bred winner at Canterbury with an impressive resume. Danger has run second or third in four grade ones. Now he's a graded winner for owner, breeder, and trainer Dean Fry who owns this four-year-old gelding, along with Downtime Enterprises and Billy Smith. Under Cody Smith, Danger fends off Eagles Fly Higher, who was well clear of three olives in smoke. Rieto Park's BOA Championship Challenge also relocated to Ruidoso in July. Number five, shockingly famous, demonstrates his class once again. One right-handed tap is all it takes from jockey Jimmy Brooks, and shockingly famous does the rest on his own. The Texas bred grade three winner loves the longer straight races and gives trainer Eddie Willis a shot at the grade one BOA championship this fall. Shockingly famous races for Stone Chase Stables and Alexia Willis. Senor Frogs and Pirate Cove's Hero round out the top three. The BOA Sandy Downs Championship Challenge relocated to Pocatello in late July. A start to finish performance is turned in by Frog Nation. Formerly campaigned in Oklahoma and New Mexico, Frog Nation is too much for the stakes veteran Walcott with E.G. Mail third. Ridden by Carlos Guillen Chacon, Frog Nation is a Texas bred four year old gelding owned and trained by Julio Corral and bred by Clarence Scarborough III, who also bred shockingly famous. AQHA Racing Challenge Update, powered by American Quarter Horse Association. On upcoming editions of the show, we'll have more regional qualifiers. Then as we get closer to the fall preview championship night, be there in Albuquerque to cover it and wrap it up afterward. I'm Jim Byers. Thanks for watching. And look for us next time here on the AQHA Racing Challenge Update.